I believe that Christians are poor, broke, and sick simply because they're double-minded. Now, this was a, a statement my, my pastor said the other day at church, and um, I got to thinking about it. You, you guys know I've, I've preached, spoken, taught on that exact topic here on the channel, but I guess that makes sense because uh, I've been plugged into my local church for 20 years and have been sitting under teaching like that for 20 years. And it's a very seasoned teaching, and it's awesome. And I was thinking on this again this morning, and I was like, let me dive into this a little bit. Uh, we're just going to do kind of a, you know, you know how I like to do. We're going to study the Bible a little bit. I got my iPad right here with a couple different translations and some different things. I, I have this problem, guys. I don't know how to make, uh, basically every time I make a video or a podcast or whatever, I want to do five, six, seven of them because I want to expound and go into a ton of different examples and different things because I want to help you guys get it. So that's what we're going to talk about today is, is the fact that Christians are often poor, sick, and broke simply because they're double-minded. Or in another way to put that, you're not getting what you're praying for because you're double-minded. I'm going to point some things out, show you some things today, and then give you the cure for double-mindedness. And it's going to help you today. I believe if you get what I'm teaching you, study it out for yourself, get revelation of it, everything in your life could change. If you're new to the channel, my name is Travis. I'm here to help. I want to help Christians win. I'm on a mission to help 10,000 Christians make $10,000 a month in passive income so that they can fulfill the big things that God has called them to do. Because you're called to something big, and I don't want something as small and pesky as money getting in the way of that. If you'd like my help learning how to do that, how to go further, faster, I've got links in the description below. We'll help you master your money mindset. We'll show you how to increase your income. We'll show you how to create passive income. We'll show you how to multiply your money. We'll show you how to activate God's principles for increase so that you can live that abundant life now. And guess what? We're going to do it without cutting expenses, without budgeting your life away, and I won't even tell you to be a better steward. All right, it's an awesome program. We've changed thousands and thousands and thousands of Christians' lives today. Again, link in the description. Check that out if you're interested on in going further, faster. Okay, let's go over here to James 1. Let's, let's start in verse 5. Okay, if any of you lacks wisdom, let him ask of God, who gives to all liberally and without reproach, and it will be given to you. But here's the condition. Let him ask in faith with no doubting. Now, make a little mental note or write it down. Remember what Mark 11, 23, and 24 says. When you speak to a mountain, speak to your situation. You have to believe what you say and cannot doubt in your heart, and it will come to pass. Okay? This is reiterating that principle here. But let him ask in faith with no doubting. For he who doubts is like a wave of the sea driven and tossed by the wind. For let not that man suppose that he will receive anything from the Lord. So again, back to the original statement. The, re the reason a lot of Christians are poor, broken, sick is because they're double-minded. Their mind is going in two ways. It is divided. Faith requires you to focus and to lock in on the result or the solution or the promise or the scripture that you are standing on. If it goes two ways, it's not going to work because remember even Jesus said a house divided cannot stand. A mind divided cannot stand. You got one going this way, you got light and you got dark and they're battling it out. But there can't be room for both. We got to walk in the light. Remember Jesus said you've been translated from the kingdom of darkness to the kingdom of light. Well, we got to see that and operate in that. And that, that is a, a, a statement that encompasses everything, including our mind and including the way that we think. All right, verse 8. He is a double-minded man and unstable in all of his ways. You see why that's important? Because he's unstable in all of his ways. This concept of being double-minded is going to affect every area. It's going to affect your marriage. It's going to affect your kids. It's going to affect your money. It's going to uh, affect your investments. It's going to affect your calling, your fulfillment, the thing God put you on earth to do. It affects everything, all areas. You will become unstable. This is important. 
Let me give an example. If you are, uh, I'll put it this way. I've heard preachers from the pulpit say things like this. Um, I don't know why God gave me this sickness. He must be trying to teach me something through this disease. Okay, there's two inherently wrong things with that statement. New covenant that we live under now. There is zero incidences of God giving anybody sickness. And it never says he uses it to teach you. Every time God runs into, Jesus runs into a sickness, what does he do? He heals it. He doesn't put it on anybody. And he also healed everybody. It was God's will for everyone to live in health. Isaiah 53, verse 4 and 5. 1 Peter 2.27, Matthew 8.17. Multiple times when Jesus was here, Jesus was on the earth, it said he went about healing all. He bore all of our sicknesses and infirmities. By his wounds, you were healed. It does not qualify and say he randomly selects people to heal. It says it already happened. You are healed. You just now receive it. That's for anybody. That's for everybody. It does not say it's God's will for some people to be healed and some to be not just random lottery. It also does not say the person who is the best Christian is the one who gets healed and performs the best or anything like that. It also does not say that God will put a disease on you to teach you something or that he can trust you with this infirmity. So that half statement I said from a preacher on stage saying things like, um, I don't know why he gave this to me. He must trust me. And I think God is going to be glorified through this. He's teaching me something. Okay. There's double mindedness there because that's not in the word. So you made that up. You got that from somebody else who said it and it sounded good and it kind of justified somebody being sick. All right. The second problem is inherently every time somebody says that they follow it up with, will you please pray for me? And pray that God removes this disease and infirmity from me. Wait a minute. If God put it on you, why would we pray that he takes it from you? This is wildly double-minded. It goes on to say, let that person who thinks that way don't expect to receive anything from the Lord. Now, maybe you haven't verbalized that exact sentiment, but maybe you've been thinking things along those lines. Maybe even thinking things like, um, I've got this pain or I've got this thing. I don't know why God hasn't healed me yet, but I believe he can. I just don't know why he hasn't yet. Okay. You're getting there. You're in the right direction, but you're off subtly. You, you have one part of your mind going this way and another part's actually going this way a little bit. It's still double-mindedness. Because one, the Bible, this is not how healing works now. It's not like I have to wait and see and hope that God does this miracle for me. Now, because of what Jesus took on the cross, again, go back to Isaiah 53 and study it out. Get your study Bible. I recommend the Dake study Bible. And it's crazy powerful, the stuff it reveals in here. Um, actually, I'm going to, let's just go over there real quick. Let's go to Isaiah 53. I want to read you something in here. Verse 4, surely he has borne our griefs and sicknesses, carried our sorrows, yet we esteemed him stricken, smitten by God, and afflicted. He was wounded for our transgressions, he was bruised for our iniquities, the chastisement of our peace was upon him, and by his stripes we are healed. I'm going to break it down for you real quick. 
right? Well, one of the cool things about the Dake Study Bible is he does things like this. So the very first note is, go to page 1157, and I'll show you 10 proofs that Christ bore sin and sickness both. Okay, so that word there for griefs is actually, uh, in the original language, it is sicknesses. Okay, uh, then it goes on to talk about how he took our bodily, our sins bodily, he was stricken, he was beat, etc., so that we could be healed. I'm going to do this. Let's go over there real quick. So we're just doing a Bible study, and y'all can handle it. Okay, I don't know if you can see on the camera here, but it's amazing notes, powerful notes, and I've got it highlighted. I could probably do, I should, I'll probably do a whole other lesson on just this right here. Um, but my point is, because I've studied this, because I've taken the time to come in here and see that Jesus has taken away our physical sickness on the cross, when I hear something contrary, I block it out and keep my mind single focused. I've gone in here and here's page after page after proof that God took away our sicknesses when Jesus died on the cross. It connects it to Matthew 8, 16 and 17. It connects you to Psalms 41. It connects it to 1 Peter 2.24. It goes in here, breaks down the original Greek and Hebrew languages and what this really means. It's, it's so powerful. It provides overwhelming proof that God is the healer and that you are now healed. You just need to receive it. So again, what that does is that helps me become single-minded. My mind is set on him. My mind is set on his word. My mind is fixed on him. Now, I can expect to receive whatever I ask because that is faith. I was going to read more of this, but then I I saw how much notes it actually is, and we'll, we'll dive into that another time. Um, for those with the Dake Study Bible, go check out page 1,157. Your jaw is about to be dropped. It is phenomenal. Okay. Let's go back to this, this concept of being double-minded because I think a lot of times, this is, this is how God has done it for me over the years, is I think I'm good. And I think this is, I think this is how we operate, right? Like, oh yeah, I'm good there. I'm not double-minded. And then you start to break down all these thought processes you have, challenging the thoughts you have, and you're like, oh, I'm, oops, I guess I am double-minded. Maybe that's why things haven't worked out for me. So if you've been struggling with a, a health issue, I need you to think on this specifically. Are you double-minded, or is your faith truly locked in that God is the healer? See, why I say a lot of Christians are sick, it's because they're confused. What happens is they don't know. It's like, I don't, if you have to say, I don't know why, that means you don't know this. So I don't know why God hasn't healed me yet. I don't know why I've had this issue, this sickness, this autoimmune disease. I don't know why I've had this for so long. I don't know why God won't heal me. But can you pray with me that he'll take this from me? Again, no condemnation. But I want you to understand why it's not working. Because God didn't put it on you. And so your prayer life is all weird. And, and basically they're, they're prayers that don't, they're not effective. Because there's confusion laced in them. And the Bible says the devil is the author of confusion. So if you feel confused, you need to go back to James 1.5 and you need to ask God for wisdom. Holy Spirit, show me what scriptures I need to learn and study and be standing on. Put the time into this. It'll be worth it. The reason we can get double-minded is because we have one part of our life here. We'll say 40% of our minds on the word, but 60% is in the world. And that can include our senses. Well, my shoulder still hurts, so obviously I am not healed. 
And that makes sense logically, but remember Proverbs 3, 5. Don't lean on your own understanding, reasoning, or logic. But trust God with all your heart and your mind. So you might be feeling a pain. I want my mind here, 100%. I don't want to be double-minded. I want to be locked in here. Uh, let's look at Romans 12, 2 real quick. Because we're talking about mind and mindset. And being double-minded. Verse 2, you guys know this one. And do not, Romans 12, 2, do not be conformed to this world, but be transformed by the renewing of your mind. Let me read that to you in the New Living. Don't copy the behavior and customs of this world, but let, let God transform you into a new person by changing the way you think. Isaiah 26.3 says, 26, says, you'll be kept in perfect peace if your mind is fixed on God. See guys, these things are powerful. And these things are, we gotta get them. We gotta get them down. If you're double-minded, you've been keeping a large portion of your thinking either in a doctor's report because it's your senses. Like, I get it. I understand. You're thinking, I'm not healed. Look, I still have the pain. Obviously, it didn't work. You're talking to other people who are like, yep, we're just getting old. Got all these aches and pains. It's just a part of it. Oh, man, I couldn't do that stuff anymore. Remember when I was young? And like, you're surrounding yourself and immersing yourself in the problem and people who are thinking like the world. But we need to be thinking like the kingdom, like the word. Are you guys getting this? Are you starting to see it? Uh, another one about basically the two main ones I see. I kind of see like three problems over and over again, actually. Sickness, not living in health, not living well. And then two, being broke, poverty. And then three, not fulfilling the call of God on your life. And I believe those three things are because of double-mindedness and basically everything else. It's, in my opinion, it's the reason you're not receiving, the reason your life isn't going to new levels, the reason you're not increasing, uh, even in your relationships, or you're married, or maybe you're single and you're and you're you're excited to be married. All of these things can be hindered because of double-mindedness. And again, just a refresher. Uh, the Bible says, if you're double-minded, don't expect to receive anything from the Lord. Let me read you the notes here uh, from Finnis Dake. And he says this, He who doubts is like a wave that is rising one moment, sinking the next. One minute he believes, another minute he does not. He says yes and then no to what God has promised, never making up his mind which way he believes. He staggers, helpless in prayer, like a drunken man. It is as certain that a doubtful man will not get an answer as it is that the man of faith will get an answer. Yo, that's pretty powerful. Listen to how the message translation puts it. This is good because what I'm about to reveal to you guys is something I see all the time. I've done it in the past. We don't do it anymore. We make corrections. If you don't know what you're doing, pray to the Father. He loves to help. You'll get his help and won't be condescended to when you ask for it. Ask boldly, believingly, without a second thought. People who, and this is how it words it, people who worry their prayers are like wind-whipped waves. Don't think you're going to get anything from the master that way. Adrift at sea, keeping all your options open. That's the opposite of faith. It's a powerful way to put it, guys. Go look that up for yourself. Reread that again. Get that in you. So the second big issue I see is when it comes to money, when it comes to finances. I wear, I've got gear, link in the description if you're interested, rich Christian gear. Okay? It messes with people. Uh, we'll wear this in public. And some people will be like, tell me more. I'm interested. That is awesome. 
I believe God does want us wealthy so that we can go and help more people. Then you see other people who are like, that's wrong. I don't think that's right. I think rich is bad. Well, if you think rich is bad, you're going to be in big trouble because you're going to stay broke. Rich is actually great. Those words that um, you might have a negative connotation with, rich, prosperity, increase, abundance, those words. Well, you might have developed a negative connotation to them, but I believe that's the enemy's trick. He wants you to have a negative connotation with those words because if you have a negative connotation to those words, it ain't never going to happen for you. You will never live the increased life. You will never live a financially abundant life or abundance in any area. You will never live a prosperous life. You can't because on the inside, you're double-minded. And here's where the problem comes in. All those words I mentioned are all God's words. God himself wrote the words abundance, prosperity, increase, overflow. Those are all his words. And the devil has got you to think they are bad words, gross words, icky words, whatever words. He loves that you have a negative connotation with those words because then he's like, sweet. He will never be prosperous. Ah, that's awesome. See, the devil's like, I can't talk him out of his faith. Like he's going to go to heaven. But if I can get him to live a crappy life on earth or even just a settled, compromised life, if I knew that, if, if Travis knew, if you knew you had no limits, oh, it'd be game over for the devil. But if he can get you to limit yourself where you're like, you know what? Like, like uh, you know, I don't want to be greedy. So if we could just make, God, if we could just make like, 60 grand a year, 65, I would be happy with that. I wouldn't ask for anything else. Look, I don't even want luxury cars. Just give me that little Toyota Prius and I'm good, yo. Like, uh, man, we don't need a big house. Let me just have this little thing. Three bedrooms, two baths, we are good. It'll cover our family. That's all I'm asking you for, Lord. I won't even ask you for anything above it because I don't want to be greedy or selfish. Double-minded. Because over and over and over again, just go back to any of my videos in the past. We cover all this stuff. God says, I want to give you the abundant life. I want to make you prosperous. Deuteronomy 8.18, I've given you the power to get wealth to establish the covenant I made with your ancestor Abraham. I made him a promise that you'd be wealthy forever if you want to walk in it. You don't have to. You'll still go to heaven. That's fine. But man, you're going to limit your impact you can have here on earth. We recently went through a situation where several, several of my friends that lost loved ones. And it was, you know, it was a big, big deal and kind of a bummer. But man, my wife and I, we were able to bless them financially with money and a lot of it that it just floored them. It gave God credit. We gave God credit. We give God the glory. Those people were able to go and thank God. Lord, thank you so much for this provision. This is all in 2 Corinthians 9, by the way. It says when you are generous and give, God gets the glory and they will start thanking God for the act you did. That makes God look awesome. This is all a generosity cycle, a blessing cycle. Remember Deuteronomy 28, all the blessings that will come upon you, a lot of them are financial. It says God's blessing will come upon you and overtake you if you obey the voice of the Lord. Stop being double-minded when it comes to money. You haven't studied the money scriptures. You're double-minded because you hear something in here, but then you go listen to your friends who go bash prosperity teachers. And you don't know which one to think. You've got to lock it in. If you want to follow your friends who bash prosperity teachers, just know they're doing something contrary to what the Word says. But the problem is you don't have a solid enough foundation to know what the Word says and say, this is what I'm going to believe. You haven't made a stand. You're like a wind whip wave. You hear me talk and you're like, yeah, that's right. That sounds good. And then you go and you listen to the news and you hear the exact opposite. You go and listen to that jaded friend who never understood the Bible in the first place. You go listen to your uncle who says, oh, all preachers want your money. I saw a preacher the other day. He was driving a Mercedes. Can you believe that? That's not right. What do you mean it's not right? You don't even know how he got the Mercedes. You think he stole tithe money or something. But you don't know. You're judging people. And the Bible says don't judge people. You guys see all the problems here? It's all because of confusion. It's all because you don't know what you're standing on. So because you don't take the time to learn and study, get into this thing. The Bible is clear. It's not hard to understand. You can take pretty much all of it very literally. 
and live an amazing life. But you've got to choose what you're going to believe. And that's what faith is. Let's go to Mark 11, 24. We'll wrap up. But what I want you to do in this whole time is analyzing what you think, challenging your current thoughts, looking at your situations. What areas of life aren't awesome? And then why? I want you to dissect your double-mindedness. I want you to think through it. I will do this often. I will write out my results, what I'm thinking. I mean, just do it like this. Write out, why have I not received my healing? And then answer the question. And then go a layer deeper. Well, it's because this. Well, honestly, I remember hearing a preacher when I was little say, God puts sickness on you to see how you'll handle it. It's like a test. Well, I want to pass the test, but why am I telling people to pray for me? Wait, what scripture is that? You need to go down this trail. It will help you. Do the same thing with money. If you've been struggling financially or maybe you're just doing okay, you know there's other people out there who are crushing it and doing abundant, extravagant, generous moves. They're being able to be a massive blessing like you want to be, but you're like, why can't I be a blessing? I only got 300 bucks in my bank account and it's been that way for a decade. You need to figure out why. James 1.5 says you can ask God for wisdom if you expect him to answer. I love you guys. This is going to help you. Mark 11, 24. 23. 23, yeah. Jesus is talking. Assuredly, I say to you, whoever says to this mountain, be removed and be cast into the sea and does not doubt in his heart, but believes that those things which he says will be done, he will have whatever he says. So here's an opportunity to be double-minded because you guys are probably still thinking that God moves mountains for you. Because there's worship songs that say that. And old preachers have said that. And it sounds cool and it sounds right. God, why haven't you moved this mountain? Why haven't you opened this door? Why haven't you done this thing? Why haven't you? Why haven't you? Why haven't you? He's saying, why haven't you? Because Mark eleven twenty three 23 says that you say to the mountain. You have the power and authority. God, why haven't you made me rich yet? Deuteronomy 8, 18 says, you have the power to get wealth. Why is the devil attacking me? James 4, 7 says, you resist the devil and he will flee from you. You just didn't know. You haven't built your faith on this stuff. You've just been going to church once a month for 22 minutes. Then you roll out. You don't even open this thing. Well, I think we found the problem. Of course you're going to lose. I love you guys. Someone's, someone's got to be your best friend. I'm trying to be your friend. I'm trying to tell you what's up. I've gone through all this stuff myself, and I'll bring it to you. So here's what you're going to do. You're going to check yourself. You're big boys and big girls. Paul says, examine yourself to make sure you were in faith. You cannot be double-minded in your prayers and in your thought life. You have to lock in on the truth. The truth will set you free. So how do we do that? Immersion. Immerse yourself. Give God's word the time, the effort, the energy. Lock into this. I want you guys to live great lives. And I want you to do something big for the kingdom. I don't want you to just survive at a higher level. I want, I want you, when your race is done, when your race is run, I want you to feel like I did it. I did what God called me to do. I finished the course. Not just I survived and did okay. I got my 401k with my million dollars in it, got the white picket fence and paid off the house when I was 70. And now I toured around in a Winnebago. You can do those things, I guess, but let's do the God things too. The stuff that really matters. The stuff that actually will fulfill you. And that's the feeling you're actually chasing is fulfillment. Lock into the word. Listen to a, a, a word of faith, faith-building sermon every morning. Because Romans 10, 17 says, Faith cometh by hearing, and hearing by the word of God. It's got to be a habit, hearing, I-N-G, repeatedly, over and over and over again. If you don't know who to listen to, binge listen to my stuff, okay? Go back through the YouTubes. I've put out so much content, so much free content. Because this is what changed my life. 
So I want to provide that for you in hopes, not even hopes, I know it will change your life because all I'm doing is preaching and teaching out of the Word of God. It's going to build your faith. Get in the Word. Go back and listen to the scriptures I'm talking about. Study them out for yourself. Get you a study Bible. Like I said, I recommend the Dake Study Bible and the New King James. It's a great one to start with. It's awesome. It will go in-depth on everything. It breaks down everything. Get into this. The less you listen to the world, the better. It's the cause of double-mindedness. You're hearing something contrary to what God said, but they make good points. There's logic and reasoning behind it, and there's sound logic behind a lot of it. You listen to it long enough, and you will start to think, oh, that is a good point. And hey, like I said, this could even be a preacher that tells you that God puts sickness on you. You listen to him for a while, and you might think, that's a good point. That makes sense. That lines up with things I thought in the past. But you haven't lined it up with Scripture. And that's the key. If the news and the world is telling you that the economy is going down, a recession is coming 100%, are you prepared for the recession? Are you prepared for the apocalypse? Are you prepared for the worst things ever? Are you prepared for things to get horrible and your life's going to be miserable? Hold on. What scripture are you talking about? Where's that in the word? We're going to go to the New Covenant, and we're going to say, wait a minute. Everything in here just promises me better, not worse. When I lock into this, life goes to new levels. But you're listening to this, and it's hard because faith comes by hearing. Well, if you're hearing this, your faith in the news will rise. Your faith in the world, in the doctor's report will rise. Cut that junk out. Focus in on this. Build your faith here. Hear this. Speak this. Build your faith on this. You're going to get what you pray for. You're going to get what you ask for. You're going to get what you speak. Let's make sure it's all rooted here. And we're going to remove double-mindedness and lock in on what God has said. I'll leave you with this last power tip. This was something God showed me about a year and a half ago, and it's changed everything for me. I've eliminated the phrase, why isn't this working? Now, anytime I have the thought, you could look at your bank account and say, why isn't this working? You could look at a symptom or physical illness and say, why isn't it working, God? Instead of that, I eliminated that way of thinking and I replaced it with the simple phrase, it is working. No, Satan, it is working. Because I realized that phrase is just a seed of doubt the enemy's trying to plant in my mind. Because if I say, why isn't this working, that means I believe that it is not working. And if I believe, I say it and believe it, I will not get it. That makes me double-minded. That disqualifies me from Mark eleven twenty three. I now have doubt that what I say will come to pass. It's so simple, but we have to be aware. We got to put in the work a little bit. I'm here to help you with that. Please like and subscribe to this channel. Share it with somebody you know who's been struggling with this. There's people on here who have little Bible studies based around these videos. They they, they talk with their friends and their spouses about this stuff. I encourage you to do that as well. It's free content. It's here to help you. Let's use it. Let's do it. If you guys do want to go further faster, again, I have links in the description below. Step by step, helping you outline everything you need to live the increase life. We've helped thousands and thousands of Christians. If you want my help with that, uh, I'm here for you. I love you guys. Make sure you like and subscribe. I'll see you in the next one.